Hello everyone, my name is Logan Bishop, and today I am going to be talking about morphological operators. To begin, let's establish some context. Photography became a topic of interest during the mid-19th century, when the idea of the pinhole camera collided with the discovery of photoactive substances. The oldest surviving photo, a view from the window at Legras, was taken in 1826, exemplifying the capabilities of such a simple system. Humanity's ability to capture images has come a long way since then. Today, we can get high-resolution images from conventional cameras, our cell phones, and most scientific equipment. Furthermore, the desire for high-quality image capture in medical, security, and scientific fields has made image analysis a multi-billion dollar topic. So where are we now? Yesterday's photo films have been replaced with the CCDs of the modern age. Now, the images we capture can contain whole galaxies or go as small as depicting single atoms. No matter what the size, these images share a common set of problems. Most notably, this includes the presence of noise within an image as well as image blurring due to the lens being out of focus. How can we go about resolving these image issues? One possible avenue is through using morphological operators. Morphological operators alter an image based on the dictates of set theory. To start, we must first translate our desired image into, bl into a black and white pattern. Doing so allows us to find two regions, the white foreground, represented by a 1, and the black background, represented by a 0. Next, we define a pattern of bits that directs how our set operation will interact with our image. We call this the structural element, or kernel. This, too, is a collection of ones and zeros that is smaller than the original image. Lastly, we define a set of operations that dictates the inclusion or removal of a pixel. This is done primarily through bitwise AND and bitwise OR operations. How does this all come together to bring greater clarity to our image? First, we take our structuring element and scan it across our starting image. As we move across, one of two things will happen. Either the conditions dictated by the set operation hold, leading to the central pixel being set to 1, or the conditions fail, leading to an assignment of 0. Now let's look at some of the different set operators. At the top of the morphological hierarchy is the hit and miss operation, which serves as the parent function for all other operations. In the most simplistic terms, the hit, and, the hit and miss operator requires that the portion of the image being compared matches the structuring element exactly. All foreground bits must, ma must match, as well as all background bits. Further down the tree, we have erosion. Erosion removes all pixels in the foreground that are not completely surrounded by other foreground pixels. Dilation, the dual or conjugate of erosion, adds a pixel to the foreground as long as there is at least one neighboring foreground pixel. From these two operations, we derive two more operations, opening and closing. Opening an image involves dilating an eroded image. This removes bits from the foreground that do not match the morphological operator pattern. Closing an image is the dual of opening. Here, a dilated image is eroded, thereby removing noisy pixels from the background. These two methods form the basis for denoising images using morphological operators. Now that we have established how morphological operators work, let's talk about what we can do with them. We can use erosions to split fused objects or clean edge blurring. 
Dilations can be used to fill in erroneous blank spaces or fill in cracks within characters. Opening and closing can be used to clean up random noise within a picture. Given all the other possible techniques, why do we choose to use morphological operators? First, morphological operations are quick to calculate and easy to understand. Second, they are computationally easy for a small number of images and can be processed very quickly. Third, they work great for well-defined tasks within a, sim within a single image. This simplicity does come at a cost. More, proper morphological operator usage dictates that we must select a good structuring element, which does assume some level of a priori knowledge about our image. All these methods affect all pixels equally. There is no form of detection for inconsistencies that could be real data. Eroding and dilating can thus introduce errors that, into the image that did not exist before. Finally, these methods work best with black and white images and have no ability to work on color images. While it is possible to do grayscale by transitioning from bitwise operations to thresholding operations, this increases the complexity of the method. Other, more complex methods do exist for handling image artifacts. Ensemble image averaging removes noise by averaging the values across several images. This, however, does require that we have multiple images of the same subject, which is not required by morphological operators. We can also choose to filter out certain noisy components or threshold certain numerical values for image colors or intensity. This too requires some level of a priori knowledge and is prone to user error. Another option is to use Fourier transforms. While this method is more likely to retain important data in the image, the computational cost per image increases greatly. Thank you for listening to my brief introduction on morphological operators. Best of luck denoising your images.